Hi guys, if I could just get your attention. Um, my name's Jay Wilden, I'm the Technical Director at Calgary Futsal Soccer Club. First off, just want to thank you all for attending uh, to the Women's Professional Franchise Press Conference. So today we're going to start off with a little video about our club. Uh, if you'd like to just turn your attention to the television, we're going to show it first. Who are Foothills? We are a highly ambitious club. We started in school gyms and worked our way up to our own private facility. Foothills players have won Champions Leagues and competed in World Cups. You may remember us from our 2018 PDL Championship run. Back over, can Calgary find another and seal it? It's Moosey! All but ensures a PDL title coming back to the Foothills tonight. Yeah, a lot of familiar faces there because we are the club that helped bring professional men's soccer to Calgary. And now, we're doing it again. We are trailblazers, sisters, daughters, mothers, and allies. We build champions both on the field and throughout the community. We keep making her story, not history. We are Foothills. Thank you very much. Um, so today got three special guests I'd like to introduce you all to. First off, I'm going to introduce the gentleman to my right, Lee Tucker, our current UWS head coach and Girls Academy manager at Calgary Futsal Soccer Club. Secondly, I'd like you all to, to meet a uh, lady right here, Diana Zumwalt. She's our Director of Women's Professional Sport. And then lastly, former Olympian, former player and current CEO of Project 8, Diana Matheson. Okay, first off, I'd like to uh, start with Diana Matheson, who's going to come up and talk about the vision of Project 8. And lower. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming today. This is a fantastic turnout, and this is my first time at this facility, and I just want to say it's, it's incredible, and congratulations on this. It's Fantastic. I want to get the ball out and have a little kick around after and maybe wore the wrong shoes though um, Thanks everyone for coming uh, Obviously you all saw the news uh, about a week and a half ago that we are Launching Canada's first women's professional sport league in 2025 eight teams across the country and we announced our first two teams which of course included Calgary Foothills um, and this this is a special group of people. We obviously launched with uh, Vancouver Whitecaps FC and Calgary Foothills. One of those uh, being very much a community-based club and one being an MLS club. And I will say off the bat, uh, I think the leadership and bravery and passion uh, and vision that the folks in this room have for women's soccer in this country is unparalleled. And when we started looking for our first founding teams in this league, we went after the people uh, and the clubs that we knew shared our vision for women's soccer in this country uh, and the limitless bounds that women's soccer has in this country. Because we're just getting started. Obviously, we've had the women's national team on the world stage for years. Our, our youth system, our girls system is, is the second or third best in the world, period, in terms of participation. We already know we have some of the world's best players in the world period, and we've been lacking one thing, and that's women's professional soccer. Uh, and myself and this group plan on leading the way, and you know we've made the announcement, and now it's time to, to get to the real work for the next two years for building the foundation here and across Canada to kick off in 2025. Uh, and, and this group specifically, I know two things about Calgary. I am from Oakville, Ontario, so not born here. Uh, I plan on uh, marrying into the Alberta family. My fiance is from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, as she likes to say. 
Two things I know about this place. One, I need to drink a lot more water when I come here. I'm really not used to dryness ever. Uh, and two, this is this is a leading city in Canada for entrepreneurship, for innovation. And this is a city where if you have a dream, Calgary is not going to tell you no. And that is what's happening here. No one was building women's professional soccer in this country, so this group of people has decided to do it. And I'm so excited for the future. We're obviously just getting started here, and and we'll have a lot of answers for you today too. But there's going to be you know a long process over the next two years of finding the rest of the answers and and building this thing as a community in in Calgary. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming, and I'll I'll leave it to these folks here. Thanks. Thank you, Diana. Uh, the next person I'd like to invite to the stage is the Director of Women's Professional Sport, Diana Zumwalt. Uh, thanks everyone. Um, in terms of what I'm going to speak about, we'll echo some of the comments that Diana's made. Um, I'm going to talk about why this is important for women, um, as well as the connection to our community, and uh, then kind of a vision around what that inclusion of our community is going to look like. Um, you know, in terms of for women, it really is going to create equal opportunity. Uh, it's going to promote inclusion. Uh, you're going to see young girls and young women that can now dream about being part of a sporting organization. And that's becoming a reality. It's long overdue, as Diana indicated. Um, you know, I think it means them seeing themselves not just as a player, though, but as a coach or a manager or a professional in the front office or an executive in the C-suite or an investor or owner. And I think we can do it here in this city, as Diana said, I think we've got the drive and determination um, to make that happen. And so I think that is really why it's important to women. It's about more than just playing soccer. It's beyond that. It's creating new opportunities and dreams uh, for people as well. Uh, in terms of the connection to the community, I think it's kind of threefold in my mind here in Calgary. One, it's going to inspire dreams. Uh, it's going to build leaders. And I think it's gonna give us an opportunity to really showcase our city and our community. In terms of dreams that are gonna be inspired, you're gonna have young girls and young women that are with incredible confidence gonna say, I'm gonna be a professional soccer player. That's amazing and that's incredible. Um, and they're gonna know that they can do it right here. They're not gonna to have to go somewhere else. They're gonna know and they're gonna see it and they're gonna know that that's a reality. In terms of um, building and empowering leaders, um, we're gonna be doing that here in this city. We know um, for a fact that sport um, creates confidence, in particular in young women, to go on and do amazing things. And those amazing things may be in sport, they may be in medicine, they may be in business, but we're really going to grow those leaders um, here in our city. And then the final one, um, and Diana did a great job of alluding to this, I think we had an opportunity to really show the nation what we're made of in this city. I mean, we're a city that when we put our minds and our heart to it, we can get amazing things done. We have amazing leaders um, in this city that can make it happen. And I think we have a real opportunity here um, to show our support of women, to show our support of inclusion, and to show our support for equity. Uh, and I think, um, as Diana alluded to, I mean, I'm fairly new to the Foothills family, probably really only being part of the Foothills family for the last three years. And um, for me, it's just so impressive to see this group of people stepping up again and kind of answering the call of professional soccer. Um, and maybe even with that, we kind of know some things we're gonna do. We don't know exactly what we're gonna do, but we know we're gonna be able to get it done. Um, and I think that's just leading the way. And I think the rest of the community in Calgary is going to get behind that uh, and really push for that. Um, because again, we get things done. When we know something needs to happen and we know it's right, we make it happen. Um, in terms of our vision, in terms of community involvement, I would say that um, the goal, and I kind of indicated earlier, is to really reach out to amazing leaders um, in our community, but in particular to reach out to the amazing women we have in leadership roles um, in various different um, areas. We really want to tap into them. We want to tap into them professionally. Um, we want to tap into them as players. Uh, but we want to go as far as to tap into them as investors. We want to tap into them as owners. We want to tap into them as sponsors. Um, and we really want them to be, you know, kind of an advocate, not just for Calgary Foothills, but for Project 8. Uh, because what we're trying to achieve in this country, um, you know, in my mind is really groundbreaking. Uh, I think Diana and team have launched um, not just a league, but a great startup. She's an amazing founder. She's got an amazing pitch. And I think getting behind this initiative and really making it a reality um, in the country, but in particular in the city. And I think we have a real opportunity to lead the way. 
So it's a bit of a shout out to all the leaders in our community to really step out, figure out how you can get involved. There's various different ways. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna be reaching out to you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Deanna. Okay, the, the third speaker I'm gonna to look to bring out um, is somebody that works with the club here at Calgary Footballs. As I said, he's our current UWS head coach uh, that made the national final last year. And he's our current girls academy manager. He's a big advocate for the female game here in Calgary. I'd like to welcome to the stage, Lee Tucker. To put that up a little bit actually. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll try and give some background with respect to the soccer um, specific side of what's happening and and how this will impact uh, right now and how it will impact over the next year to two as well for for uh, some of the people sat in this room um, and certainly for everybody that's watching and listening. Firstly, we are absolutely delighted, honoured, proud to be selected as, as one of the two founding franchises for the first women's professional league. Uh, it was very clear very early on with our first meetings with Diana that our visions aligned uh, and that was to create a world-class league, a destination league where we can bring the best players, coaches, leaders into this league uh, and use that as a platform to showcase their talents but also inspire the next generation. So from our point of uh, from Footills, we thank you for involving us and we're excited to get going. Uh, our club vision always has been to change the landscape of Canadian soccer. Uh, so with the launch of the women's professional team, it will enable us to complete our pathway from the grassroots phase uh, all the way up to the very highest level now on both the male and female game respectively. So for all of our members, all of the community, uh, there's an opportunity here now to actually come into our club and actually enjoy the game at any stage, any phase, uh, and move all the way through for Soccer for Life as well. Uh, in 17, uh, 2017, sorry, with no domestic league in Canada, and I think it's well known now that we, we opted to bring the highest level of pro-am soccer to Canada uh, with our United Women's Soccer Team. So the UWS, it's uh, a US-based league, which is for aspiring uh, and former professional players, top NCAA U sports players, uh, international players that are currently playing or previously played, uh, and so we had to bring that here because we needed an opportunity for some of these players that are actually sat right here in these seats um, to continue to develop them and to continue to support them with their goals, which is to play professionally and is to represent Canada. And most of them have been fortunate to do that. But for us to support them further, it was key that we had opportunities for them. So. Um, to give you an example of what that's like, we take our sort of talented group of Canadian players and go into the States and we play against international players such as uh, Lauren Sesselman, who obviously played for Canada, Zoe Burns, who's playing for Canada right now, uh, FIFA World Player, the nominee, uh, sorry, World Player of the Year nominee, Dana Castellanos, who's at Manchester City right now, numerous US internationals, uh, and we've done all right, didn't we? <laughs> uh, you know, we've won the Western Conference Championship three times. We've been national finalists twice. Uh, we've won Coach of the Year, Franchise of the Year awards. So what it done for us was just cement that thought that we're ready for the next step. And it was just about how do we get that next step. Uh, and, and again, that led us to a meeting with Diana. And from there, uh, things went fairly quickly, it felt. Um, and here we are. So, you know, absolutely delighted for that. Um, in 2019, it was another milestone for us. We hosted a national final here. Uh, over a thousand people out supporting us at Mount Royal University. Uh, and we uh, lost a very close game to a very talented LA Galaxy team to a goal by a player named uh, Katarina Macario. Now, if you look that player up, she's now a full US international. Uh, who scored an LS final she played in as well, which was for Olympic Lyon against Barcelona in the Champions League. So again, we knew we were ready. We knew we had the players. We just needed the opportunity. Um, how did we know in, in terms of the players that we had? Well, we've provided a home for some fantastic players here in the last few seasons. Uh, our, our friend, we were joking about this earlier, our friend and now rival, Stephanie LeBay, um, you know, played for actually both of our teams, the men's and the women's team here. 
So what an inspirational character for all of our players coming through. Alex Lamontan, who now is playing uh, in France, who also played for the women's national team, was part of our group. Sarah Kinsner, who's here today, Maya Jones, Grace Story, Izzy Monk, all the players that are sat right here um, have all been part of that program. Uh, and all of them have been around the, the youth national teams. So again, how do we continue to support them with what they really want, what they desire, which is a professional opportunity? We've always believed that we've had the talent. We've always known that, always said that. It's just now, how do we get that opportunity? So why are we so committed? Well, the reality is for all of those players, uh, for them to continue in the professional game or start in the professional game, they have to leave. They have to leave the city, they have to leave their home, they have to leave Canada, uh, and that's not right. You know, so it's on us to bring opportunities to them. And yes, we've got to make sure that they're ready for them, but they are, uh, and then put them in those situations to prove that. And we will do that. Uh, the list of players goes on and on and on. And they'll, you can ask the girls after, they'll, they could tell you tons of their friends that are now doing other things because they have to, not because they want to, but because they have to do it. So again, it's on us to bring those opportunities here. The past conversations were all built around how do we get opportunities in Europe or the States or wherever it may be. Um, but again, right now, the focus is on 2025 and bringing that professional team to Calgary. As you can imagine, when the announcement was made by Diana and Christine Sinclair, uh, there were just so many calls, messages coming through. Uh, it, it was incredible. Uh, I've never experienced anything like it. Uh, I was warned a little bit, but still not ready for it. Um, and it was inspiring. It was surreal to be out in the town and have a TV on in the background with TSN on, uh, where it's Calgary Foothills, Foothills women's team that they're talking about. It's Janine Becky and Sophie Smith on TV and social media saying, now I have a lead to come home to. And what an inspirational thought that some of the players that have inspired these players, they might get to play against or with in this league. And you know, for, for me, um, that just shows uh, the significance and the value of the league before a ball has even been kicked. The feeling just around the club and the city in general is one of excitement. I can tell you that I, I have the great pleasure of working with players at this club from U11 all the way up to our Pro-Am team currently. Um, and there's some, there are some very talented players here, but it's just excitement. They're, they're now dreaming of being uh, the next Izzy Monk, the next Grace Story, the next Maya Jones, or the next Sarah Kinsner. Um, and again, what an inspiration, and that's what it should be like. They have coaches now that are excited by the role they will play and wanting to continue their education because opportunities are coming. University players knowing the professional opportunity is coming, be it on the field, or in their field of studies, there's going to be opportunities for them. And that's what it's about. Governing bodies that are here today to support us, continuing to be inspired to impact positive change. And that's what it's about. This is way bigger than just the team in Calgary. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity now to actually change the landscape across Canada. And this why it's such an historical moment and the start of a journey that will impact every layer of the game. Uh, it's on us to deliver a soccer experience that is based not on what others think is normal, but by being unique, being innovative, being pioneers and being leaders. And I think, as Diana alluded to, that's why you see Calgary Foothills stood here right now, because that's something that we've always tried to do. Uh, there was one particular message that I got, and forgive me, I will read it word for word to make sure I get this right, because uh, it came from a close family friend uh, and I thought summed up this moment brilliantly. So the message was this, uh, all I ever dreamed of as a young girl was to play sports and get paid to do it. Sports was all I had growing up. Sports was my whole world. At 16, I quit competitive sports because there is no future. No point to continue to make sacrifices. There was nothing after high school or university and I remember the day my dream died. How many girls have walked away from sport for the same reason? This isn't just history. This is a monumental shift in our Canadian culture. And our girls, my girls, can continue to dream about playing sports for a living. This is absolutely amazing and will change lives. 
And as Diana and Christine and Project 8 have declared, it's time. Thank you, Lee. So that concludes the initial speeches um, from, from our perspective, you know, with Diana being such a role model for, for so many, having lived it as a player and now being a leader in terms of growing the pathway from a female perspective in this league. It's a fantastic opportunity. Diana, female leadership here, helping support the pathway, helping with IUWS now involved on the pro women's uh, director and then with Lee's advocacy and leadership in terms of the on-field product for our female game. So fantastic. Thank you all three for coming. I'd like to open the floor now to some Q&A. Uh, I believe, Sandra, you've got the first question. Thanks, Jay. Diana, if I can lay this out to you, what was the tipping point for you where you realized nobody else was going to step up and try and form a league and you decided you would take it upon yourself and the rest of your colleagues at Project 8. Guys, you have to be at the podium, please, so we won't be able to hear you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Uh, what was the tipping point for... Yeah, where you just figured nobody else is going to do this, so I'll take it upon myself. Um, I think I, my personal journey was I retired... 18 months ago, uh, I knew I wanted to stay involved in building the professional game here, um, or it was going to be the same even for me to continue to work in football. I was going to have to leave the country again, go work in the US, Europe. Um, I knew I wanted to stay here. I didn't know what that looked like. I wanted it to be on the business side. You know, I think at that point we didn't know the best, you know, what a league could look like, would look like. Uh, so I went back to school. Uh, I've been doing my executive MBA through the Smith School of Business. And I mean, just talking about sport and the opportunity it brings people i'm in that program because of sport because i went to university because of sport because i was on obviously the olympic team and then there was athlete scholarships available so i get into this hundred thousand dollar program because of sport period so all these doors are opening because of my access to sport which is what this is about widening that to, to more canadians uh, so i was doing mba uh, and i've also been in some uefa programming as well uefa academy has different programs for agents sporting directors i'm in a uefa master for international players uh, which they created for former players to go back learn about the business of football from obviously uefa which is next level football industry so kind of over the last through the year everything i was learning that my lens was how can we use this in canada will that work in our market will that not work in our market uh, and one of the big takeaways from the UEFA course was your league, there's no blueprint for building a league. Whatever it is, whatever your team's business model is, it has to fit the market you're in, the country you're in, the landscape. So I always knew it needed to be custom built here because we're, we're a challenging country. Population, you know, more spread out. Geography, we don't have as much soccer infrastructure. Soccer's not as old. The men's, the men's game here just can't fund everything the way it can in, in some other countries. So I knew it had to be custom built. Um, and then during that time too, I didn't run across anyone who kind of had a, a better idea than I did and how to get started. And I think then the tipping point for me was I knew it was it was big. Obviously, this is a, a big project and I I was hesitant to, to take the lead and I knew I needed a business partner, A, for more business experience than I've had and B, just to do it with. I think I'm a team athlete at heart uh, and I needed someone to you know, bounce ideas off of. And my business partner, Thomas Gilbert, and I met in my executive MBA program. Sorry, this is a long yes. answer to your question. Um, so I worked with him over the past year. We were in the same team of seven. So I got to know him really well, saw, you know, what his skills were, how he functioned in a team. And I I think I sent him a voice note one day and kind of offered, you know, said, you know, you want to have a go at building a women's professional soccer league with me. Uh, and I'd clearly been indoctrinating him the past year to women's soccer in Canada. So he was, he was pretty up to speed. Uh, and he said yes. And then that was really the tipping point where we, we got to work and we started working full time about seven months ago. And then really putting the business plan on paper and, and building the model. And then probably six weeks after that, we started to approach some of the, the people and clubs we wanted to approach first. Not to throw any governing bodies or anything under the bus, but have you been, as a former player, for a very long career, were you frustrated at the lack of progression in having a league? Because 
I mean, if you think back to 2002, to your very last game, what has changed other than you guys winning uh, some key Olympic medals for the women's game? Like, there always seems to be something missing. Yeah, I think I think there's frustration there that it hasn't happened yet. I actually heard um, the Radio Canada um, podium documentary that's that's following us around. They put out their first episode, and they found a, a quote from John Herdman from 2012 saying, if we didn't have a pro league by 2020, we'd fail. So it's it's something the players, the national team coaches, before John even, have been saying that's what's next, that's what's missing. Um, so yeah, I think as long as it hasn't been here, we've all been frustrated. Uh, I think in lots of my discussions with UEFA people, with FIFA Pro, with leagues in the US, I also heard a lot of people say at the end of the day, it's not ideal for your governing body to build a league. That's how it's happened in a few countries, through necessity. But that's not what they're built for. They're built for amateur sport and national teams. They're not supposed to run professional leagues. So at the end of the day, I think that that wasn't going to be the answer either for them to take the lead on this. Thanks. Foothills has pushed multiple times to lay the foundation for a women's pro league in Canada. So who approached who on this and why was Foothills a, a great fit for Project 8? Oh, who approached who is actually a good question. So they, they, I would say, yeah, they always had the initiative and in that, you know, I'm, I'm a bit um, removed from, you know, the on the ground landscape, but you hear people that are working on things, right? You hear the companies and the people that are pushing things behind the scenes and Foothills was always one um, and a few groups and they were trying to figure out, you know, how to take it to the ne next level. I think the link there was they would brought in Stephanie Labe and Georgia Simmerling to be a part of the, the working group. So then they obviously, they knew what I was up to and in, in looking to the big business case for league. So they were kind of my point of contact to, to loop us in. So it was probably both ways, I think. You guys looped them in and, and they were looping, I don't know, it was an exchange of information. We probably reached out to, to say, could we pitch you at some point is probably, yeah. But it was mutual perhaps, <laughs> yeah. Going back to that quote about not having a women's league by 2020, I mean, in 2018-2019, Steph Labe was in this very building, made a men's pro team, and then the league told her that she could not. Is there a sense of triumph to be in that same space announcing this now? Well, that you'd have to ask to Steph, uh, maybe. Uh, I think that just speaks to the, you know, the ingenuity and the innovation that's been needed in the past, like our careers are like a jigsaw puzzle of trying to find places to play. Like, where do you go to university? Because you have to leave, most likely. You could stay, you don't have to leave, sorry. Uh, but most of us go through the NCAA. And then, you know, you go play pro, but it's hard to find an international contract. Or maybe you don't want to live across an ocean. Um, and then again, when you retire, it's like, oh, now I can go home. Okay, still no jobs, you know, no pro coaching here. Um, you know, no no jobs for women in professional sport here. So, so it's about building all that. So the path is a little more a straightforward. You can stay home your whole pathway uh, and continue to be involved in, in football when you're done playing too. Um, and I had to be there, but I just forgot it. So <laughs> same <laughs> of that answer. <laughs> yes. um, two teams in obviously do an eight uh, eight team league eventually. But um, what do you think that both of the club here and also the community here brings to the table for not just the eventual league itself or league play, but also in terms of this critical building process that you're going to be going through over the next few years. Yeah, I think this club is is very important to how we've gone about building this. Um, obviously, Whitecaps FC represent a different model paired with an MLS club, um, and then this approach is is different. This is being more built from the ground up. And one of the one of the toughest things in a new league, obviously, when you kick off is you're starting from scratch, right? And you have to like sports football is so incredible because you have that community of people who, you know, especially in Europe, other places grow up with that football club. And it's like it's yours. It's your community. And that's really hard to create in a new sports league. Like, how do you manufacture this history of a club with a new franchise? And I think with Calgary Foothills, it's it's different. We have this history in the community. You guys have this history and it's already on the ground and it's already part of the community and now it's gonna grow up out of that. I think that's one side of it where we've already got a, a bit of built-in history there, which is incredible. Uh, and then just the, the different ownership model and have it being women-led from the beginning. That was something that was really important to us. Um, this is about building different. So we're looking at different ownership structures. We want women at the forefront. Women's professional sport is new. 
like women's professional soccer has been around like 20 years. So it's it's still time to innovate, find what works. And we're only in a position now where we get to be at the podium, you know, that, that have experience in the sport. So it, it's time to, to start doing things differently. And Calgary is such a great market for this. Again, capital of Canada for women entrepreneurship. Like that's incredible. And, and to get to build a model here, I think there's, I already have other groups across Canada that are looking at them and seeing what could be possible in their market because of what Foothills is doing. And moving ahead uh, in the the next few years, what are going to be some of the biggest challenges for you and your group on this and the participating clubs, obviously? I mean, Mm -hmm. you've had to even feel the question, I mean, you know, try to find a jersey for, you know, for Christine, for example, right? Um, Yeah, and I don't mean that as a marketing question, I think it's that (coughs) just in terms of kind of, you know, building and integrating within communities like that. What are some of the biggest challenges that you're facing moving ahead? I think, and I've been asked that, and I don't, I don't have one or two, one big challenge that scares me. There's just a a scope of work that obviously has to be done. And our approach is going to continue to be engage Canadians and experts and knowledge in the different areas we need to be good at to try and be good at what we need to be good at. Um, Obviously the priority for us um, at the league level is gonna be find the right other six owners in, in our other um, markets and then support these folks as best we can as they're building and throw markets. Uh, but we're, we're comfortable with the business model um, and that, you know, bringing in the, the team ownership and, and the sponsorship market out there, which is really, really strong right now for women's sport, um, that we've got a really strong model. So it's just getting the boots on the ground next year and, and taking it to the next level of work. I think, honestly, we've, we've done the easy part to this point. You know, we've we found the people who believe in this first and we've made a lot of noise about it. And now it's just a lot to do for the next year, but no, no one major challenge scares me. Okay. Thank you, Diana. Um, are there any questions for Diana or Lee? Well, for the clubs, uh, how does this, what does this mean for, for the development process for the club now? This is kind of a this is kind of a step up to the next level, and I'm curious in in terms of you know, how you go about that, and, and also what it means for the local community too. So far away over there. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, from a development point of view, I think we're kind of fortunate in a way that we've been on this journey before. Is the the men's side of our program transitioned from foothills into the CPL with cavalry. Um, and so heavy involvement from a club perspective in that journey. And I think it's definitely some synergy we can sort of take and learn from there as we embark on this next two years in particular. Um, you know, we obviously we play in a high level pro-am league right now. Uh, and that's a great tool for us to actually prepare for what's coming next. And, Again, we, we have some fantastic players that we bring into the program and are challenged to a very, very high level uh, in that program. So we'll look to um, you know, review that over the next year or two of what sort of role that plays. Uh, what do we add maybe before and after that to sort of replicate what a first season may look like. Uh, and then from a development point of view, uh, it's now the next couple of years is myself, Jay and uh, CMSA, Macquarie Minor Soccer, and Alberta Soccer working together to get the plans right. Um, we are Alberta's team, uh, and now we have to get the plan right to get the best players into this team. Uh, and so, yeah, I think like Diana alluded to, there's there's lots of work to be done, um, but it's all things that, you know, we're excited about and look forward to. Uh, and uh, just the other question was, it's a bit of a two-parter, but first of all, I think some people are going to wonder, years away yet, but are you already eyeballing potentially a venue to play in? And then the second part of this is, uh, what is the, the club's ask, I guess, in terms of what it means from the community, what it means from from, from government, what it means potentially from the private sector as well, to, to be able to pull this off? Sure. Do you, do you want to say that or do you want to say that? Yeah? Okay. I'll bring Deanna in for, the, uh, for that side of things. Yeah, I would say we've got a few potential venues. We've had a few people uh, approach us. Um, so no decisions made at this point in time, um, but uh, you know we're confident that we'll have um, a place to play. Um, but early conversations um, happening there. In terms of the community, I think just going back to my comments before, um, really our goal is to have this be a community-based team. Um, so I think there'll be engagement in various different ways. Um, uh, you know, like I said earlier, we're we're hoping you know obviously we want an ownership group um, that is a little diversified. 
Um, so we're gonna we're working with some great groups in this Calgary who are incredibly innovative in that space to I'll call it democratize the ownership um, and spread it out. Uh, I think that's a brilliant model because it engages the community. Um, if you've got broader ownership um, of the the club, then people are excited to go out and be part of the club because they're they're part of that. So um, so we'll be reaching out and working and are already working with groups to try and make that happen. Um, you know, we certainly will be approaching all levels of government. I think this is like an incredible cause. Um, you know, inclusion, um, equity in sport, equal opportunity is super important. It's super important um, for um, from a government perspective. It's super important to businesses. They realize it. And I think we've got a real opportunity to really kind of galvanize um, our community around that. And like I said earlier, um, being in the business community here in Calgary, um, we're doing it already, but we don't talk about it enough. We don't showcase it. And I think this is just an incredible opportunity to show the nation that we're maybe a little bit different than they think we are. Um, And so there's going to be various different ways um, that we're engaging, but uh, we'll be working and collaborating, um, uh, you know, certainly with Project 8 and various clubs that arise. Um, You know, um, as Diana said, we've already had others want to speak with us. So um, I think it's a real opportunity for Calgary to show its collaborative nature um, and show that we're a little bit different and have a different brand. Um, so, So we'll be doing a lot of outreach.